Hello, my monstrosities. Hello once again. Today I bring to you a Eureka moment. Finally, I think I finally cracked some things and we'll we'll explain all of that. You you're probably looking at the thumbnail or whatever I've titled this and you can probably know where I'm going, but stick with me, I promise. And if you're looking at the community post confused on what on earth uh, why I would pull the video before this and put this one up instead. It's because this one is a little bit more pressing than the funny thing. Um, we'll talk about that too. Anywho, I have been racking my brain over the Winged Hive Tyrant for a couple of weeks, if I'm being honest. Um, eh, maybe longer. It's always in the back of my mind at this point. The Winged Hive Tyrant is the cheaper of the tyrants, the cheapest of the tyrants, and has an ability. Well, we all know Will of the Hive Mind, once per turn, one friendly tier in the unit within 12 inches of one or more models with this ability can use its stratagem for one less CP. Paroxysm, Psychic. At the start of the fight phase, you can select one enemy unit within 12 inches of and visible to this model and roll 1d6 on a 1. This Psyker suffers d3 mortal wounds on a 2 up until the end of the phase. Subtract 1 from the attack's characteristic of weapons equipped by models in that unit. So, why oh why have I been trying to make the Winged Hive Tyrant work? And, I should also say, it's not to say that nobody's made the Winged Hive Tyrant work. Um, we've seen people take the uh, Flyrant in the Vanguard Onslaught list, because it is a Vanguard Invader. We've seen Sam Pope take it in his Invasion Fleet list, like, this entire time, and I went over that in the Turvagon video. So it's not like Flyrant is hard to make work. That's not it. Mine is... Why... You have to really consider why you want to use this thing compared to the Walkrent, especially after the Walkrent got buffed to have um, give lethals in a 6-inch aura as well as the Assault. So it really comes down to why on earth would I use that? And then you have the Swarm Lord get the Vect update in which, well, yeah, I think Vect is still better. Now, I should also talk about what, one thing that intrigued me that I have the original why I started rethinking the uh, fly rent. And one of the balanced data slates took its look, because I've been really flubbing that lately on these recordings. Uh, I, <laughs> they said that you can do, like, stacking buffs on some abilities, right? So, with Paroxysm, if you have three Winged Hive Tyrants, that means that one unit is subtracting three from the attack characteristic of weapons equipped by models in that unit, you know, during the fight phase. And that's really fucking funny, right? Now, is it worth it? No. And I should also say, um, I think... We, I think Swishly, your boy Swishly, on, I want to say it was this um, bug watch, has addressed this idea as well in running it, and it not kind of be worth it. Or maybe he stopped at two winged hive tyrants, I can't remember. Um, but that's suffice to say that doing the funny thing with the winged hive tyrant won't won't be too satisfying at present. Um, now, the example that the FAQ gave, if I can remember, was something along the lines of, like, you can stack the Great Unclean one buff, so that's like minus three toughness. That's a lot more useful, and the Great Unclean one is a lot more durable than a Winged Hive Tyrant. So, there's that. And then, again, why would I want this Tyrant when I could have the others. Well, let's talk about that too. Starting with the other one that got buffed that isn't the Walkrent, Swarmlord. Swarmlord has, well, Lord of Deceit. We should stop calling it Vect, has Lord of Deceit. And, well, specifically, Malign Presence. 
If this model is your warlord, each time your opponent targets a unit from their army with a stratagem, if that unit is within 12 inches of this model, increase the cost of that um, stratagem by 1 CP. And we also have high commander. At the start of your command phase, if this model is on the battlefield, you gain 1 CP. Perfect. So, with the Swarm Lord and Lord of Deceit, or Malign Presence, excuse me, um, people quickly went, yo, a monster that is putting out an aura of increase the cost of CP? That's kind of turbo. Or so we thought. As the meta has developed, and we stopped getting punched in the face by world eaters, now we're getting punched in the face by blood angels, and orcs are on the rise again. With all of those listed, you kind of understand where we've begun to see where this matters. Melee armies. If somebody's outside of 12 inches of the swarm lord, who gives a fuck on what stratagem gets used, right? 12.1. 12.01. If it's not touching that 12 inch radius, all right. Yeah, that 12 inch radius, not diameter. Uh, sorry. Anywho, if it's not touching that bubble, um, it's not, it's not worth. It's not doing it. And for 240 points, we're not knocking things out of the park. With Synaptic Pulse doing a Psychic Torrent for 18 inches, D6 plus 3, Strength 5, AP 1, Damage 2, or the Bone Shaper's Twin Linked, 8 attacks for melee, hitting on 2, Strength 9, AP 2, Damage 3, because of Synapse goes up to 10 for the Strength. We're talking about T10, 2 up say 4, Invuln 10 Wounds. Now, that's fine and dandy. Okay, that's all, all good, right? But the plus one CP usually isn't as good as once per turn, don't spend a CP. As we've come to find out. Now, the other thing with Swarm Lord is, well, can be a test to Tyrant Guard. And we've seen lists pop up with... 18 Tyrant Guard for things like Assimilation Swarm and, well, we'll skip ahead in some tabs here, we saw Spacebug Studios take it in Synaptic Nexus. Um, go check that out. Now, there comes the next part of how worth Tyrant Guard are. If you're doing a play Right, if you're doing this, you're tailoring your entire list to it. It's worth it, right? Because you're at, you know, you're not going for the utmost damage. You're going for being bulky and being hard to kill. So then, you have Swarm Lord, Neural Tyrant, Hive Tyrant, all taking a bunch of Tyrant Guard, and that's 170 a pop. For each Tyrant Guard brick. Those are. Maliceptors. Now. With that. That's the point of Maliceptors. I do want to talk about the Maliceptor. To talk about how we got to my. Brain Blast moment. The Brain Blast. With the Brain Bug. Of the Maliceptor. Is that it has. Encephalic Diffusion. While an enemy unit is within 6 inches of this model, each time a model in that unit makes an attack, subtract 1 from the hit roll, and if that enemy unit is below half strength, subtract 1 from the wound roll as well. Okay. Monster, where the hell are you going with this? Well, as we can see so far, this is all stuff revolving close proximity. Swarm Lord eats up melee, Armies, Maliceptor, also tough for melee armies. And just the closer combat and Winged Hive Tyrant's ability works in melee. Or right, specifically the fight phase, technically the melee doesn't have to happen. Well, it always has to happen, but you get the point. We're looking for close combat, okay? So, 
Where are we going with any of this? Quite a few of you, <laughs> more than I imagined, saw me ask a question on the stat check stream. I want to say it was this one. Um, regarding if it is the opinion on taking two Hive Tyrants for Hive Tyrant and Swarm Lord. And I should say, I don't value that highly either. I am in the camp of, that's a lot for a little. Because the Tyrants don't hit that hard themselves. They have access to doing so. Um, kind of, right? They have, they have the access to get there. Now. Where do we go from here? I should also note that another person that's talked to us about um, the wonders of Tyrant Guard being attached to Tyrants is Maelstrom Gaming. Has been running that in Assimilation Swarm for quite some time. And you go, well, yeah, that just seems awesome. You bring back Tyrant Guard that are T8, 3 of save, 4 wounds, bring them back. On the regen. Why wouldn't you, right? Well, let's take this all back to why I'm thinking about the Winged Hive Tyrant. If we were to take the Winged Hive Tyrant, I get the other thing that I have issues with, it, as opposed to the wall crank, is that I want to utilize the deep strike of the flying monster. Right? Deep Strike is a good ability to have into which you get points, get into positions. And that means that for usually the first turn, I'm not benefiting from Will of the Hive Mind because it I'm I'm not twelve within twelve inches of anything, right? So that means that maybe for 35 points less, if I just want to focus on that, I'm starting the hive ty the winged hive tyrant on the board, which really feels kind of cheating myself out of it. And then if I go, well, I'll just bring it in on the second turn, I'm making myself hurry up in the applications for the fly ring. Again, a deep striking monster that has synapse. To get Synapse into places that I need, right? That's the other benefit of the Fly Rent with Deep Strike. I can put down Synapse closer to things that need it without needing necessarily the Neural Tyrant and hoping it's within 18 inches. I can drop down somewhere 6 inches away from my monster, or my unit rather, my models, excuse me, and give them that bonus when it's needed. So to offset that, in my head, you start offsetting the problems with the Swarm Lord. Where, yeah, I'm getting bonus CP, but at the same time, I'm spending it, right? If I get a bonus CP on my turn and I do something like redraw my card, or maybe use one of my stratagems just for the lack of... Just for cohesion's sake and a quick one that everybody knows. If I were to Invasion Fleet on that first turn, hell, maybe I didn't go first and my opponent got an angle on something that I deployed a little bit too cheekishly or whatever. I didn't play cagey enough and they're shooting me already. Right? I am using my extra CP on that 5 of Feel No Pain. Compared to when that could be free, and I'm using an extra CP on a reroll, while I'm also using an extra CP on, for the sake of it, changing the, um, changing my adaptation for the round, right? It's not the biggest problem, but it's the limitations of the Swarm Lord, especially in other detachments that we'll get to. It's highlighted a bit more. 
So where do we go with this idea from here? Are you going to try to convince me to take the Swarm Lord and the Winged Hive Tyrant together? I'm saying maybe don't write it off. Not that it's the newest wave, but maybe don't write it completely off. Because when you take the two of them, you then offset each other's weakness. The Swarm Lord is on the board, gives you that extra CP, so you don't have to worry about feeling like you missed out on saving CP with the Fly Rent. And with the Fly Rent coming in later and having better positioning, you can get your synapse in places, debuff what you actually want to debuff, all while then offsetting the Swarm Lord's need to use that CP generation without capitalizing on it. So by putting the two together, that's just my tinfoil hat so far as to the offset. And then I don't need to feel as guilty as specking with Swarm, with Tyrant Guard, excuse me, because that should be the only like, why are you bringing them unless you want to attach Tyrant Guard to things? Now, you can still attach the Tyrant Guard to things to make your Swarm Lord a little bit more irritating for those armies. But then also the other thing with that is you usually want your Tyrants alive, right? So, if I want my Swarm Lord, who's only good... Well, I shouldn't say only good. Okay, only good, kind of, at this point in time. To put out this Lord of Deceit aura, which means I have to expose my Swarm Lord compared to giving a melee army with all these Tyrant Guard lethal hits in range. Because I should also say, I think I've seen quite a few people make this mistake. The Hive Tyrant, let's pull, pull you up real quick. It's for ranged weapons equipped by models in that unit have Assault and Lethal. So if you've been giving your Tyrant Guard melee lethal hits, I'm sorry, but you've been playing it wrong. Or just incorrectly. Like, I guess that is still wrong, but you know that's illegal. Um, so, there's that. So it does feel wasted to have 18 ty To me, this is not to criticize any other player's list, not what I'm trying to do here. But... To me, I want the most out of my units, therefore, if I'm giving my Walkrin Tyrant Guard, I'm not really u utilizing the rest because I'm pushing up in melee, right? If I'm doing the 18 Tyrant Guard route. Now, if I'm just trying to be bulky and do that, that's fine too. But again, let's talk about the other one that I brought up here for this idea. The Malice Scepter. Like I said, 170 points. If I want bulk and just to do that, I can take the Malice Scepter and then minus one to hit, possibly minus one to wound. Put those up on the table. They have range. They have melee. Not the best melee, but kind of better than Tyrant Guard melee, if we're being honest. For the same 170 points. And again, these auras of minus one to hit while in line with Vect Auras, or Lord of Deceit Auras, <laughs> Malign Presence Auras, and minus one attacks characteristics with the Winged Hive Tyrant when I want that. That's the grand gist of where I'm going with this. Because you're getting the tank, you're getting the firepower, and about the equivalent damage you would have gotten with the Tyrant Guard. So you go, where am I putting all of this, monster? What detachment are you trying to tell me this idea of yours goes in? Is it Invasion Fleet? You've commented how Invasion Fleet is actually a melee detachment, right? Like, that makes sense? Yes and no. Um, you can probably fit this in Invasion Fleet. That way you get more out of your tyrants getting sustained and or lethal where and then you twin linked the rest right you know get some damage in five up feel no pain on these things that 
Need to be five up, feel no pain. Hell, maybe you fight on death, but for one CP and like eight attacks, is it worth it? That's where it comes into it. So if you want to fill out the rest of your list with um, Hormagots or something like that, or maybe you go with Broodlord Gene Stealers, that would be the angle for this because we are still talking about close combat. Maybe you take it with more um, Tyranid Warriors and go on that angle. That's where all of this would probably go then. It really depends on where you want to fill out the rest of your list. Especially when now, because we have access to bonus CP and reducing CP, I got one from the Swarm Lord, and now I'm reducing one with my Fly Rent. You put in Adrenal Surge more often, right? 2 CP is steep, right? It is very steep. Not everybody likes 2 CP stratagems. So with Adrenal Surge, up to 2 Tyranid units from your army that are within synapse range of your army and are eligible to fight, or 1 that isn't um, in that synapse range, critch on 5s for all of these shenanigans. This is now a decent option if I'm bringing Fly Rent Swarm Lord as the combo. I'm 35 points cheaper than bringing the um, Walk Rent, which at the same time, if you go down Exocrine route of getting rerolls, it is good to have rerolls into sustained and having your lethals on no matter the target with the foot hive tyrant get that but now we can unlock more of invasion fleet in my opinion going with adrenal surge two units at a time critting on fives for one cp that's much more appealing and the way that the faq um last clarified if you can target at least one of the units, or was it two FAQs ago? Losing track on those. If you can target at least one of those units with a tyrant, you can get the. It, both of them don't have to be within 12 inches of you doing Will of the Hive Mind. As long as one of them gets there, you get the ability to reduce one of the CP because one of them is a target. So, that's. Probably the more appealing one, but trying to tell people to let go of, well, I, actually, you could fill out the rest of the list however you want, so maybe you don't go Exocrine, uh, Tyran Effects as an Invasion Fleet. Not to say that you don't all the way, but now it makes a little bit more sense if that's the way you want to go for it, right? If you take the Malice Scepter you're already taking, Exocrine... Swarm Lord, Fly Rent. You get all these benefits, then Brew Lord Gene Stealers. I don't I haven't been keeping track of points in my head. I'm just shooting this at the moment. Get those crits on fives for uh eleven models that do dev wounds and you want the sustain, or crit on fives for the re-rolling um sustained ones onto the melee warriors. And then the other thing with the melee warrior option is that people in sometimes an invasion fleet won't take the wing tyranid prime because you're already getting sustained from the things you're putting the attacks into normally. Like you won't normally be trying to hit a monster or a vehicle with the winged hive tyrant block. But, you know, what you want to do there. That's just theory number one. And it does kind of solve getting your swarm lord from just taking so much damage because you have a bunch of tyrant guard that now have a feel no pain of a five up and then you get up there get annoying and put out your lord of deceit your malign presence excuse me aura out that's option number one then we have the one that gave me this epiphany and also shout out to the comments it was do we won, if I remember correctly. Um, and if I if I just mispronounced your name, sorry about that. But you asked a clarifying question, like you had a question on if something would work. And 
Honestly, I kind of forgot it does. Tyrant Guard will benefit from Rampaging Monstrosities. One Tyranid monster unit from your army that has not been selected to fight this phase until the end of the phase. Each time a model in your unit makes an attack, you can reroll the hit roll. Hit roll is good, but it gets better when you're rerolling hits and wounds. Can we all agree? Now, if you check out this sick nasty thing about the Tyrants, their weapon of choice is twin length, which means you're re-rolling the wounds. And the Tyrant Guard, we've been wondering, well, we're not really going for damage, where do we put them, right? Now, it is to be noted that they don't benefit from Enraged Behemoths because they are not monster models. They... They don't get that. It's monster models. Alright, so keep that in mind. But, where did I put you? Tyrant Guard. Do have a twin linked weapon that you can benefit from rerolling hits and putting that into here. The other thing that made me land on Crusher Stampede to an extent is Savage Roar. Right? In my head, I was like, wait a minute. You can do the Vanguard Onslaught thing kind of better though. But at a cost, admittedly. With Savage Roar, one tier this monster from your army that was selected as the target of one or more of the attacking unit's attacks in the fight phase, the, that enemy unit must take a Battle Shock test. And until the end of the phase, each time a model in that enemy unit makes an attack that targets your unit, subtract one from the hit roll. If the Battle Shock test was failed, subtract one from the wound roll as well. Now, I believe, um, Swishly covered this before too but if you go well minus one to hit minus one to wound minus one attacks characteristic good luck trying to get through something right and admittedly that's probably when you don't have the malice scepter around or as i was saying before the brew lord gene stealer out let's just pull those up so everybody can get a visual of that in which at the start of the fight phase select one enemy unit within engagement range of this model until the end of the phase subtract um, one from the hit roll each time a model in that unit makes an attack right cool so that's that's the scheme i was like well this is a poor man's gene stealer shenanigan and both of them are vanguard invader we've kind of seen that before and it can be quite annoying to get through but why Right? Why? So, let's talk about it in something else that's not Vanguard Onslaught. With Synaptic Nexus, you also have access to similar veins of what we were talking about in the other ones. You have the option to give the Tyrant Guard 5-up and Vulnerable save, and in Synaptic Nexus, people do like to take the Malice Scepters and all the things... For reinforced hive note. So now your synapse units are taking, they have armor of contempt. Minus one AP to the attacks going into them, which is good when you, on top of that, have minus one AP onto the attacks. We have, well, you could because we're also talking synapse. Well, minus one to the hit, but I was looking for you. Minus one to the hit, minus one to the wound, possibly minus one to the attacks characteristic. Sorry if I'm going a little bit fast, but. I guess I'm a little bit excited, right? Um, you combine all of that with the potential of a 5-up save, and a 5-up save is the same as a 5-up save. Depends on when you do it. If you have a 5-up and vulnerable before you take any wounds, that's better because especially if you're going into things like damage 3 or 2, you have to hit more 5-ups. If I can stop the 5-ups in their tracks, I'll take that instead. While giving myself access to plus one to hit on different turns, admittedly, right? Um, not at the same time, but when I'm not praying for the five up, I can get the plus one to hit roll for my melee situation. That I probably won't be asking for because the tyrants hit on twos. Now, you can do that if you really feel that this Tyrant Guard block idea that you brought along to protect the Swarm Lord 
is worth the investment of trying to get those hits in because you can still rely on the minus one armor penetration as well. That's fine. Maybe you don't need the five up that turn. That's cool and dandy. But outside of that, and we'll just close you. This is just about you right now. You have, well, Maliceptor that I can be okay with spending that CP to make you hit on twos because you have a four up and vulnerable anyway, which is better than five, right? And we're getting into close combat. Monster, you've talked a lot of shit about Synaptic Nexus, but here you are recommending it quite often. Yeah, I, I admit, I concede on that. It's a lot because of what people want to build with it. Especially because now you also have the option to advance and charge if you are like, hey, we are going full balls to the wall melee thing. And that's the other aspect of this idea into which it's nice and fine to have a melee army and essentially eat other melee armies alive when they come into you. But the other thing about revolving your stuff around being a melee army is that you have to get into melee. One of my biggest grievances on Vanguard Onslaught is you can get the things into melee, but are the things that you're getting into melee worth getting into melee? The things outside of it, yeah, good luck trying to get there. So while Invasion Fleet, again, is a melee detachment, as even though we don't play it like that because it's usually not worth it, it doesn't get you, it doesn't help you get there. Now I will also concede once more on the fact that with Overrun, you have the ability to get into further engagement consolidation range shenanigans. Like it, sure, consolidate a little bit better, move you up to the board where you want. But now that you have this CP generation you have access to using other things just besides the rapid regen every turn, right? And then the rapid regen helps you protect to get up there. Synaptic Nexus gives you mobility to get up there and protection to get up there. And then once you get there, doing damage up there. So that's on that. And I should also say, it is just now hitting me in the head. I have the next couple of videos scheduled for the next couple of days. And one of them talks about a faction in which I seem to follow a similar pattern of regening CP and not using CP and another, another one of those videos. So hopefully you don't think it's as stupid over there as this one is, I will say heretical. It is not, it's not, <sighs> I guess it's not revolutionary because the walk rent does it as well. And the only excuse to use both a walk rent and the swarm lord is when you're bringing these tyrant guard bricks. But if I can bring malice scepters instead of tyrant guard and benefit all the same, there's that. Oh, the other thing with synaptic nexus. Sorry, I got off of that. Is that if you bring exocrines or if you don't you still are okay because the benefit of synaptic nexus as well with this is that with irresistible will one synapse unit from your army that has not been selected to shoot or fight this phase and one enemy unit within 24 inches of and visible to that synap to the synapse unit until the end of the phase each time a friendly tier ditch model makes an attack that targets that enemy unit if the attacking model unit is within six inches of your synapse unit re-roll a hit roll of one and re-roll a wound roll of one this gives you again better because it's re-roll hits and wounds that we had discussed is better than just re-rolling hits than rampaging monstrosities that you can save for later i'll explain if you are still bringing the Exocrine, which probably are, right? It's just a good monster, right? You can then save Irresistible Will for something else in the fight phase. Or vice versa, if you go the melee route of this and you bring Broodlord Gene Stealers, which are Synapse, or Melee Warriors and Prime, which are Synapse. 
where they reroll hits and wounds in the fight phase. So now, if you drop the Exocrine, you can do this with your shooting to cover your ass there. Or, if you have figured out all the points, I didn't keep track of any of these points again, I'm sorry, I'm just finally putting these pieces together. If you found a way to fit in Exocrine, Melee, Warrior, or Gene Stealer Blocks, Maliceptor, Hive Tire, Flyrant, Swarm Lord, you have the option to basically become the fucking Eldar. Where it's tearing and reroll instead, right? Where, oh, I shot something with the Exocrine, rerolling hits. Oh, I didn't get an a- angle for my Exocrine on that one, but I'm within 24 inches. Irresistible will. Oh, in the fight phase, I'm fighting something that isn't with my Gene Stealers or my Melee Warriors. Irresistible will. Oh, I, I, I'm always strapped for CP in this detachment because I, I built it around putting the Neuralictor and the Screamer Killer, maybe, with the Smothering Shadow, so I've been using it on that, and then using a point for Reinforced Hive node, so I don't really have too much to do that. Oh, I heard CP was an issue? Well, now you have no more CP issues. And uh, the thing that I will admit I've gone down a rabbit hole to get back to the fly rent. I can use the fucking deep strike part. I can use the deep strike part. I can put this in places. That was the other thing with my Crusher Stampede argument as to why you might want to do this in Crusher Stampede is that, and also if you throw on Ominous Presence if you have the points right, you can cover another weakness that's within Crusher Stampede. You, one, don't often have a lot of Synapse characters in your Crusher Stampede list, because a lot of the monsters, eh, enough of the monsters that you want to bring aren't, okay? The other thing is that, oh, my low model count, how will I prevail? How can I get things there? What if we are talking about getting points with things that deep strike, such as fly wrench and trigons and mollocks, which are hard to, well, I guess not hard to deal with, but any army that's struggling to pick up, um, for lack of better ideas right now, Bulgren, uh, I think I've put out the Lich Guard video by now. I, I have put out the Lich Guard video by now. What am I talking about? Um, Lich Guard and, you know, Canoptic Wraiths and shit like that. Those are like T6, T7 type things. T5 for Lich Guard, right? We're talking about things like that. If you're having struggles to pick them up, you're not necessarily just immediately picking up a T10 monster that can deep strike or a T9 monster that can deep strike in the case of the Fly Ring. Now, if they do all the power to them, but you got to invuln on the Fly Ring and you, for the other ones, I, I would recommend you don't put them in just immediate immediate railgun range. Like, that's that would be my tip there. So, now you have pieces that can play the mission while still benefiting from Crusher Stampede being, for most parts, a fight phase detachment. Fight phase, fight phase, fight phase. Now, charge phase. Um, now there is, if it happens in shooting, and you're shooting, it is a little bit better than Invasion Fleet in that regard. But, you know, that was the other thing I was thinking about on how we got here to this Eureka moment. That, you know, if you take all of this and you go, it's not fucking worth it, monster, just let it fucking die, I'd understand. But at the same time, the fly rent is cheaper then the walk rent by 35 points. We've seen at the current time of recording. We've seen Sam Pope and others utilize a fly rent instead of a walk rent. And I think most of us can agree. If you don't bring any of the tyrants in your list. You are just fucking trolling. Um, I shouldn't say that. Because we've seen some placings with that as well. But you're hard pressed to make it work all the way. But. If we're going to look for an angle on bringing both, I am of the opinion that you are specking into melee and making it hard for people to hit you. And 
not getting hit hard or that often, right? So, once again, the winner, begrudgingly to me, is Synaptic Nexus. You have the invones for things that need invones, like melee warrior bricks, or your tyrant guard. You have the plus one to hit in melee for those same things. You have minus one AP for shit like we keep wanting to do with the malice up in this detachment. Um, even though it goes from a three to a four, but benefit of cover, sure, maybe safe on twos every night again. And you have the rerolls for whatever you didn't shoot with an exocrine. If exocrine was involved anyway, you can also slap on those thirty points difference with psychostatic disruption onto a flyrant. And admittedly, that runs into the same issue that I have of it um, with Will of the Hive Mind, where like. If you don't use it on the first or second turn, you're not doing the secondary effect, but I don't know, keep that in mind. However, you do have a scrambler array for 12 inches, so that's cool. Um, maybe drop in that minus one to leadership within nine inches from a deep strike angle. Hell, maybe you just want to take less damage, then take less AP, less attacks, uh, minus one to hit, minus one to wound. That's all the angles. I'm running out of steam uh, because the madman affects her wearing off. But yeah, that's... I think I finally cracked why I would want more than one tyrant in my list. So yeah. If you like the video, like it. Got a comment for me, comment. And until next time, peace out, my monstrosities.